Hi ladies and gentlemen, my name is Samantha Christine and today I'm going to show you a very quick way to make fun abstracts at home. The other day I had paint left on my palette so I was able to create two or three of these little pieces and they use very similar colors. So I started with scribbling some lines on my surface and then as the shapes formed, I just chose whatever color I wanted in that section. I painted it and then once it dried, I added a very small black line around each shape going in and out of the entire piece. I did that so that it looked a little bit more um, defined and a little bit more cleaned up. And now I have a completely finished and almost self-framed piece of art. Now I'm also using like a matte board. Um, they are a little bit harder than like cardstock or anything like that. Um, they're typically used to frame pieces, but I didn't cut any of these out, so I decided to use that as my surface. Now, you can always do this with pencil, paper, and some markers or crayons if you wanted to do that. I just simply had the paint right there, so that's why I chose to use paint. Now, last night I had a ton of blues left on my palette, so I just changed the value a few times and used those new colors to have different sections. Now, this one I do not have the black line added into yet, but I will show us how I do that at the end of this video and I will use this one as an example. So grab your pens and markers or grab your paints. Um, I'm gonna go grab mine and get everything set up and I will meet you back here in just a moment. Oh, we got a little visitor. I think she's excited to learn about abstracts. Let's see if she's ready. You ready? Hi, pretty girl. You gonna help me get my colors? I'm gonna stay with the theme of using all those blues. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of blue paint and a little bit of yellow. Maybe I can get some greens in there. Those are two of my primary colors. My third primary color is red, but I really wanna stay with this soft, very um, like blues and yellows, almost oceanic. It reminds me of the beaches a lot. So I wanna stay with those colors and I already have my white um, put out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. This is the piece I will be working on. I'm gonna first start with my pencil and this is gonna help me kind of block off the corners that I know I'm not gonna wanna go past. It's kind of frame in the surface. Again, they don't have to be straight. I'm not using a ruler. I'm not really worried too much about perfection. And then from here, I'm gonna start at a corner and just start to make fun lines, but not going outside of that frame, staying all within the first shape you made, this outside frame. I don't wanna go past that, cause then I lose the white space that I have on the two sides and the top and the bottom of my abstract. I'm gonna draw just a couple more in, and you can always add or get rid of some as you're drawing. You don't have to keep every line that you started with. So I think those, those are enough lines. I have a lot of nice shapes coming in here. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and outline it a little bit with some paint and start adding color. By taking my kind of larger brush, grabbing some white and taking it to a new section. Remember, if you don't have a full palette or palette paper, use a paper plate. Honestly, those work just as well. And I'm gonna start with mixing a light color. So remember, you wanna use more of your white and less of that dark color so it really, really gets nice and pastel -y. You want it nice and light so that you can cover this up nicely if it gets in a section of the painting that you don't want it in. Now that's gonna be my first color, so I'm not gonna mix anything else until I need more colors, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started applying this to my abstract. Using my lines as reference and trying to find different triangles or circles, I can go ahead now. I have my color on my paintbrush, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start to find some of those shapes and fill them in. Now, as you can see, I went outside of that pencil line just a little bit, and that's still okay. If your pencil doesn't get covered up just as nicely, you can always put a second layer of paint on and it should cover up a little bit better then. 
So I have my first section of blue, and now I'm just going to continue placing this in wherever I think I want it. Now the key to having a good abstract is to make sure your colors are spaced apart. So I wouldn't wanna put a light blue here and then the exact same color in this section because then it all turns into one large shape. And if you want smaller shapes, you wanna make sure that you're breaking them up and that your colors aren't neighboring each other. So my next blue spot might be up here and maybe this small section here and maybe a couple down at the bottom. Now, as I continue to fill this up with the light blue and I get some of my other colors in there, I'll start to see where I need more separation in color, where I need to go back and add more of the baby blue. But that'll be as you work and as you're filling in the different shapes. for right now I don't think I'm gonna add any more of this blue color I'm gonna stop right there and I do want to make sure that when I return to my palette I clean my brush off I want to make sure I get nice and in there clean off all that dirty color and then use an empty space on your palette and kind of get off some of that extra water now Normally, if my water was still that blue, I'd go back in there and clean it some more, but I am going to get a little bit more blue, so it is okay. I'm going to put this now in a different section, and I'm going to make this one darker than what I started with. So using more blue and less white, I now am going to darken this up. Maybe I need a little bit more blue going in at the side of my color so I don't mess up the whole thing. I'm gonna get this one much, much darker. There we go. Now I didn't use all the white that I scooped out, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I can use that into a different color later. Now that is much darker than what we have there, so I'm going to apply this to new shapes. <laughs>
can see that the colors I ended up working with were that light blue from the very beginning, the darker blue that I had mixed second, and then I had taken that extra glob of white that I said I'd use later, well that was now, <laughs> and that, uh, that white and blue I added just a touch of yellow and I made a fun, um, very light baby green, and then I also just added some white to yellow to have a fourth color and that'll be a very pale, pale yellow. finished piece it's really nice to take a step back and see how it all turned out where do your colors balance I actually had to go back this was one large section of green and we can see here that I went and I cut it in half and added more yellow when I took a step back earlier I had all this yellow all on this side and I didn't have anything over here so I did go back and paint over half of that green square so I could balance out my colors and make sure that it was something that I liked to look at. Now remember your lines don't have to be perfect, your shapes don't have to be perfect. My paint brush marks are even visible in the shapes which I think kind of gives some texture. I actually kind of like how that looks. Um, now here you can see my pencil line just a little bit. And that's something that I can always go back in, maybe make that dark blue again and cover up over it. So I'm not gonna worry about that. To me, I think this is a beautiful new abstract and it really didn't take a lot of time and it was quite relaxing to make. So I'm gonna let this one dry and I'm actually gonna jump over and start making those black detailed lines on the blue image I showed you in the beginning of the video. So I'm just gonna start with the shape that I'm, I wanna start with. It can be, it doesn't have to be the edge, it can be the center shape, it doesn't matter at all. And I'm just gonna take this black and I'm gonna go around and just add a thick, or not a thick line, but a black line to the very edge of your shapes. Again, this is just to make sure that they look a little bit more defined and kind of cleaned up on the edges. So if any of your, your edges are a little hairy or not the smoothest, you can kind of hide some of those imperfections with this black. Now I am working on an easel. This might be something that's done a little easier on a flat surface like a table or desktop. Um, so keep that in mind too, where your setup does make a large difference in how your pieces can turn out. But again, I'm not worried about being perfect. I'm just kind of outlining where the colors meet to add a crisp new line. I'm gonna keep working on this and I'll see you at the end. did those black lines and even if you have a little mess up that's totally fine I still think they end up turning out beautiful now I will be adding those black lines to this piece once this bad boy dries and this was the piece I painted earlier with all of you so I'll send a finished picture of that one but as similar as they are 
they are drastically different and that's the fun part about abstracts so always remember to have fun and any mistake can always turn into a beautiful piece Again, it's been Samantha Christine, and I'm so happy we had this time together. I think we've made some beautiful abstract pieces. I know I'm about to go hang mine up somewhere in the house, so find a spot on the wall, hang up your art, and show it off. I'm sure it is beautiful. Anyways, I will be back next time with another fun art project you can do at home.